Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2016. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Cisco, IBM, NVIDIA, and our ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Peter Burris. Welcome back to the Big Apple, everybody. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Peter Burris and I are thrilled to be here in New York City. John Furrier, of course, is at Splunk.conf, you know, knocking the town there. Bernie Scheifer is here, he's an IBM fellow. Bernie, great to see you. Nice to be here again. Were you on the rooftop last night? I sure was, that was beautiful good. view. It was, it was excellent uh, uh, announcement by you guys, a fantastic event. IBM obviously knows how to throw a party, but there was a lot of meat behind the, the bone as well. As, I had a lot of people ask me, is this really an IBM event? So I thought that was a couple then. <laughs> All right. Well, it's a little funky down here, right? There's not like big hotels, and so, yeah, great job. So anyway, congratulations on that, but and, we're here. And a, and a number of extremely happy developers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, that's IBM right. gave away uh, yeah. uh, some, some great prizes to $100,000, uh, that's yeah, yeah, the top prize different... was 50,000, and two guys split it, and the second prize was 25, 25 grand. A single individual won that. So you had three people walked away with 25 grand, and then some other nice prizes as well. Yeah, it's going to be one of the most talked about things on the show floor today. <laughs> yeah, so. And Rob Thomas said he was going to do it again, so that makes it Yeah, it was good to see Rob up there handing out checks. We, we, like, it's a good role for him. <laughs> and, uh, so, all right, we're here to talk about a little bit about o o ODPI, uh, Big SQL. So what's your role at IBM, and you know, let's get into it. So I'm a longtime IBMer. I uh, have been working in the data field for my entire career, over 31 years. But for the last four or five years, I've moved strongly in the world of big data. Um, the IBM um, distribution of Hadoop called Big Insights. And uh, a couple of years ago, we created a new offering in Big Insights called Big SQL, uh, the most powerful SQL on Hadoop engine that we have. Okay, and, um, and that's, you're building that into a, 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 a new Hadoop distro with Hortonworks, is that right? And you're using ODPI to, as the framework. Talk Close. a little bit more about Close. that. So you know, we've had Big SQL for a number of years and it was distributed via our own IBM distribution of Hadoop, which continues. Um, but you know, the market um, in the distribution space is fragmented. Clients have chosen typically one or two distributions as their primary distributions. And you know, unfortunately, not everyone has chosen Big Insights. Um, so we could, just like in the days of relational databases where you support different operating systems, HPUX, Solaris, AIX, Linux, Windows, and so on, um, you, know, you can make software portable to different platforms. And to me, Hadoop is very much like a platform, very a big data operating system, if you can call it that. And so um, with work, you can make anything run just about anywhere. It is, after all, just software. But it, you know, Linux standardization helped make it easier to port and run on different levels of Linux. So ODPI is trying to do the same thing for the Hadoop ecosystem. So what is Hadoop really? You know, the classic definition of Hadoop, which people still call up, is it's HDFS, a persistent file system, plus the MapReduce paradigm for processing data. But to me, today, it's much more than that. Why? Because people have replaced components of that. They don't always use HDFS. Um, they use GPFS, or there's other open source file systems, Alexio and so on coming along. And you know, really, MapReduce in the classic sense is really m maybe more of a legacy system today. Right. Spark, Spark is the hot yeah. topic. I mean, you heard that last night at the Data First uh, event. So, it, but does that mean Hadoop is dead? Absolutely not. I mean, it couldn't be more vibrant. Look at this conference. I mean, it's, it's exploding. So to, what is today? To me, I think Hadoop should be redefined as an ecosystem of collaborative tools. Very much like Unix became a, an ecosystem of tools. And so we need to be able to interoperate software that sits on top of that platform. So the more similar different distributions are, the easier it is for people to build middleware or applications on top of Hadoop that can run on a choice of Hadoop distributions. Okay. And the more rapidly we can create experience, understanding, and knowledge so we can start focusing on use cases and the domain expertise associated with the use cases and the real insights that these tools are supposed to deliver. Which is the real value everyone wants. Absolutely. The rest is sort of plumbing, right? And you want all the tools to run on a variety of distributions. Well, I got a lot of questions. So actually we want to come back to IBM's distribution, uh, Hadoop distribution. I mean, 
Everybody had a Hadoop distro back in the day. I mean, it was Fujitsu and Win Disco and you know, Intel, Sil I Silicon know. Angle, right? <laughs> 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 I didn't really want to. No, no, we didn't. We're just kidding. We used to joke about it because everybody was announcing them. Um, and so, you know, IBM maintained its Hadoop distro. You got some customers that you know you're supporting, obviously, but it's not make or break for IBM. And if you're not the lead, worldwide leader in Hadoop distro. Doesn't really make a bit of difference to your business, right? You're doing it because you. Well, maybe a bit of difference, but like maybe a tiny <laughs> bit, right? But I mean, it's you know, you got Watson and analytics and cognitive and AI and machine learning and all this, Absolutely. you know, new stuff. And so, so but so you maintain that because you've got a customer base, right? That uses and, it. And, okay. and there are clients who really value the you know superb level of support that IBM, you know, offers for all of its products around the world, 24 by 7. So so and there's a comfort zone saying when you buy a Hadoop distribution from IBM, it's going to be around, and it's going to be supported, and it's going to be supported well. Right, and you can make a case that this is more integrated, and we're going to support it, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, great, but it's not like the be-all, end-all of Hadoop distros. Okay, so we just <laughs> wanted to sort of establish that. So, as you pointed out, you got to support multiple you know, uh, distros and, and you know, partners. ODPI is, you guys are involved, obviously Hortonworks and others, Talk a little bit many more others. about, uh, many others, yeah. Talk about ODPI, why did ODPI come about? There were many naysayers when it first came about, you know, particularly the two other major you know, distro vendors. What is ODPI all about? What has it done for businesses? So, I view it as having two levels. It, it's brought um, groups together that at some level compete in the marketplace, say Hortonworks and IBM Big Insights, um, and at the same level, at the same time, we also have the desire to grow the market to enable clients to be successful, and as you said, to, to generate those insights, the, 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 the holy grail of all this big data activity is not the data, that's just sitting there doing nothing, it's to get insight from that data. So, again, an analogy I'll, I'll draw is that, you know, in the database space, IBM is, competes and has competed and continues to compete vigorously with the oracles in the Microsoft SQL servers of the world, and yet, at the level of standardizing SQL, we all work together. So, you know, there's no um, disconnect between competing at the level of your product offerings and collaborating at standardizing SQL for the benefit of clients and the industry as a whole. And so, ODPI, to me, is an exact analogy of that, which you want to bring different companies together that compete at one level, but they collaborate to make sure that the plumbing is sufficiently common and standard so that the layer of middleware and applications on top have an easier time, can get more traction, get a, more clients, and deliver more value. And so um, there was a whole bunch of companies, some of which are, you know, I would draw them into tiers. There's the, like the foundational ones. There's like four or five that produce um, you know, Hadoop distributions. The biggest, of, the most famous of those are, are Hortonworks and IBM. Um, and then there are people who um, you know, sit on top and there's even consultant companies as well. So, so different layers that use Hadoop from different layers. And customers. And, and customers as well. Um, so the, the four uh, core components were HDFS, uh, MapReduce, Ambari, and, and Yarn. And then Spark comes into play. Obviously IBM's putting huge emphasis on Spark. You mentioned you know, that MapReduce in many respects is legacy. So how does ODPI evolve to include new Innovations. Well, you have to start somewhere, and, and you have to start with a, what a group of people think they can standardize. Some things that are, um, you know, imagine if you tried to standardize machine learning. Well, <laughs> that'd be tricky, right? Because, you know, is it Spark? Is it TensorFlow? I mean, there's this profusion of techniques and companies. So that means that that part of the ecosystem is not ready to be standardized. So they had to pick the things that were most ready to be standardized, that were already quite similar. You know, that maybe they were like 98% the same, so that last 2% is a solvable problem. And that's what they did. So HDFS is relatively mature. You know, HDFS is going, not evolving so quickly, and so it was easier to converge. Same with, um, you know, MapReduce and also Yarn. Um, Ambari is a, you know, the next wave, so that's kind of the one that's actively being worked on right now. And Ambari has you know, installation, configuration, and monitoring, and the first piece of Ambari that they're working on is actually to um, you know, make the deployment the, the same. In the same way that, think uh, back to Windows, you know, there was a, Windows installation used to be 
a gazillion different methods, right? And then there was sort of a standard Windows installer and most companies converged on that and that made for a similar um, you know, install experience, then similar entries in the registry and so on. After and a couple of lawsuits, and that's one of the things <laughs> that you're trying, to, you're trying to get collaboration, cooperation early on so right. that you reduce the uncertainty about how some of these things are going to work. And, and collaboration where you're not really differentiating. You know, people are not going to buy your distribution because of, you know, you have an extra tweak on your Inbari installer. I mean, that's right. not really where you're creating value. You're just possibly creating pain if some other piece of software that you really want, you can't install it on the di distribution that you've chosen. Okay, and then I'm trying to, I want to unpack the Unix analogy versus the SQL analogy, and I'm thinking the SQL analogy maybe, maybe is better, but I, I want to explore that a little bit. So, <laughs> You know, the Unix analogy, you know, it, it ended up, Unix ended up not working really as well as we had hoped. You know, the vision of having sort of binary compatibility. Well, you remember ANDF. So, yeah, well, exactly. ANDF yeah, so. didn't quite play out, but yeah, we're talking but, about, we're talking about a, a level up above Well, that. but so, that's what I'm trying to understand. Is, was Linux that level of, above that, and is SQL maybe the better analogy, which you used as well, for what's going on with uh, so, so no analogy is perfect. Yeah. Um, you know, I think if, if uh, Linus hadn't come along and invented Linux, who knows what would have happened in the world um, of, of Unix. You know, there were... Sun might still be here. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> right, so uh, I, I think SQL is a good analogy because of the active participation of all the major SQL vendors, even the ones that are, you know, definitely competing head on. You know, IBM and Oracle being a you know a good example. Yeah, sure. All right. So so big SQL and SQL generally in in big data, right? It's like the killer app for for Hadoop. SQL. Ironically, right? <laughs> because you know when I was first introduced to Hadoop, it was kind of like the no SQL space, right. and it kind of turned into the new SQL space. Um, so That's I, a great I, way of putting it. No, it really is. Um, and I think it's not that SQL is perfect, but you know the thing that it is powerful. Um, there are abundant skills and there's lots of tools, and those are things that really help people get going. And I think it's that second point that's so dominant, that there was an enormous amount of experience around Unix that wanted to focus more time and attention on delivering value well above it, and so when you came up with a common way of looking at Unix that worked very well, obviously Linux, um, Linux then people gravitated towards it. And it was the experience that made that so successful. And the same thing in SQL. There's an enormous amount of experience around SQL that's in manifest in tools, because the tools are pedagogic in that regard. And so at the end of the day, it's the community, the customer base, that's driving this new notion of the commons around skills and requiring this kind of new approach to focusing on the underlying tool set so that that skill can be applied to bigger business problems. Is that, is that accurate? I, I would agree with that. You know, it's, it's a, it, it, it raises the, the interface level to one that is known, proven to work. Familiar, it creates a new commons. Right. Okay, so what else can you tell us about what's going on at ODPI? Like we were talking about Spark a little bit. Does Spark fit in here? I mean, IBM's obviously making a huge investment in Spark. Are you pushing for you know, Spark as my, a my equal uh, partner in <laughs> ODPI? Or? So, you know, I don't. Well, Spark, you know, is a is an uh, Apache project. So, and I mean it's a all, first class citizen. I meant to say, right? You know, so partner, it's right? Uh, yeah. um, yeah. you know, it's already being distributed by most, if not all, of the Hadoop distributions. I know MapR has sure, it. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Cloudera has it, Hortonworks has it, uh, IOP and Big Insights has it, so. You know, the Databricks company, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they don't have their own uh, right. distribution. They, you know, they work on, on Spark, and Spark fits into the Hadoop ecosystem, but of course, Spark also runs outside of a Hadoop ecosystem, which makes it interesting. So, but to come to your question of, you know, Spark for ODPI, you know, I'm gazing into my crystal ball, I'm going to say I would love to see uh, Spark be a next project for ODPI to tackle. Um, I, I think it makes a lot of sense, especially since we already talked about it. MapReduce is kind of this legacy variant of, of the Hadoop ecosystem. You know, kind of like Mahout is a, a little bit legacy as well. So it, it's a, as, a, as a natural successor, more memory centric, you know, compute intensive, um, you know, has a lot of backing from many people, very active Apache project. Make, it seems like a really good candidate as a next wave. Now, you know, I'm not that deep into the org, so I don't know exactly where it is on their roadmap, 
um, I think it would make a lot of sense. All right, good. All right, Bernie, we'll give you the last word on uh, Big Data Week, Big Data NYC, Hadoop, <laughs> Strata Hadoop. Well, great to be here, great to see the energy. Um, I'm, you know, I'm pleased to, uh, to be able to present tomorrow about the availability of Big SQL on Hortonworks, something that many clients have asked. Um, and you know, I've had other clients say, and you know, when, it, when are Cloudera and MapR going to join ODPI so we can have Big SQL on Cloudera and, and MapR as well? <laughs> when ODPI gives up on Mbari, that's when. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, really Thanks for the it. invitation, great right, to meet with right you. Thanks for the invitation, great to meet you. Keep right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest right after this short break. Mm -hmm.